Hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Murray. I find car seats incredibly confusing. Even as a pediatrician, I know that I've installed them wrong in the past, and I thought, what better topic to talk to you about today than car seat safety and how to just get that car seat in your car correctly. I've enlisted some friends to help me. I've got Deanna King from cynicalmother.com here to help. She's a mother of three. She's been through it before. And then I also have Officer Chris Runyon from the Rochester Police Department. She is a specialist in car seats. And being a specialist in car seats is not just something you sat down, read a book for a few minutes, and learned it. This is an incredibly detailed course that you had to take yes. to become an expert. So remind me, the title of your expertise it's, is what? It's a Certified Child Passenger Safety Technician. OK. It's a state certification. Uh, it was a, a three-day classroom and a couple yeah. days hands-on, very intensive, it's long days. Unbelievable, because there's yeah. so much there's a information. Lot of information. You think of this should yeah. be simple, and there's so much information. And so first, I'm struck by, we have a baby in a seat sideways. So of course, this is not how it's ever going to be right. in real life, right? We right. don't want it to be. So this is an infant seat, and we want them to be rear-facing. Right, up to two years, to two years. Um, is what the medical field is saying, and that's what we are, are telling people. The law is taking a little time catching up with mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. um, the law still says uh, 12 months. More but of this type of position then, right? Correct. OK. Correct. So something I hear a lot is people get worried that you know a two-year-old, first of all, this is an infant seat, so they might not make it up to two years in this mm -hmm. seat. You'd be switching seats. But well before that, their legs are coming out, and they're touching the seat. And people say, they're going to break their legs. They're going to break their legs. Legs can hang out. We want the head lower than the back of the seat, though, right? Right. Correct. That's one of the most common things we get. Their feet will probably grow over the edge of it before uh, mm -hmm. they outgrow the seat, and okay. that's fine. Um, you want their, they can stay in this seat until their head is about one inch from the top of the shell. Okay. Uh, once it's within that one inch, then you need to look at upgrading. All the seats will have a length or a height, you know, usually sure. it's length of babies, okay. and then a weight. Yeah, they can't, so we can't ask them to that. stand up and get their height, right? right. We get their length, right. okay. So, uh, so that's what you want to stay with, is within those numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and with short of having a scale or, or some way to measure them, um, don't worry about the feet. The feet will hang off. Okay. Um, and more so on the other side is we get they're too small for this. I want to take sure. up all that extra space. Okay. Um, and, and we talked about the little ha uh, halo type stuffing things yeah. that go. Um, if it comes with the seat and it's attached to the seat, the manufacturer often tells you to remove that at a certain point. It's generally around that one year or, or at a certain height. Um, if it is not attached in a part of the seat, don't right. put anything behind the child. So you don't pad. have to pad the child. The car right. seat will do that for you. It will. It will. Okay. It will protect them in a crash. If you want to take up some of the space, because when they come home from the hospital, you know, they're, they're teeny very little. teeny. teeny and little. they look so small in yeah. these seats, yeah. especially, you know, they get very big. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that we tell people that they can do is take those very thin flannel receiving Which blankets. Which we all steal get. from the hospital. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you <laughs> yeah, the white ones with or the you get 15 of them at your shower. Yep. In, you know, greens and blues and everything. If you take those and you just roll them up and you put one on this side and okay. one on this side, those are fine. Uh, they're fine generally until the baby will start reaching and pulling, and then okay. you know we worry about and them putting them risk. in their mouth. Sure. Right. Um, so if you just want to take up space on the side, that's fine. Just never anything behind. When they wiggle, they will pull whatever is behind behind their head, and okay. then we'll actually push their head forward, and that's right. what we're looking to prevent with the sure, babies is cutting off their, their air. They're right. so little, and they don't have that good head control if they flop. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Once they have better neck control, then mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about your angle as much, and you certainly don't have to worry about filling up all that space. Okay. So getting that bag of Jello that is a baby who has no control over their body mm -hmm. into that seat. Um, we're coming up to winter here in Rochester. We want to keep our children warm, our babies warm. We see people putting them in snow suits and winter coats and hats and all this kind of stuff. And then in the seat, or you see mm -hmm. those devices that are kind of like baby sleeping bags that you can put in the car seat. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on those? Turns out neither are probably a good idea, right. even in cold Rochester. Nope. Um, if you have one of this style, and there's, there's two different types mm -hmm. of infant seats, but if you have this one and you've brought this in your house, that's perfect. Right. Because you can safely secure your baby in just their inside clothes, um, which is very important. When they have a big snowsuit on, the yeah. problem is you mm -hmm. cannot get the straps tight enough to their body. And while it yeah. may feel snug because it's snug so, yeah, against got, the fabric. You can imagine here, you know, you've got your big snowsuit that you've wrestled your baby into, right. which is, you know, it's a feet very of strength. cute and everything. But. Right. <laughs> and then they're in that, they're wiggling in this. This is slippery, so you've got a lot of wiggle going right. on there. And it feels snug, but what happens in a crash is that the child is going to move until it hits the seatbelt, and it's going to crush that fabric that you can't get snug enough, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And it's going to cause another impact. It's going to cause the child to impact on the straps. And then so not even a coat? 
What we recommend is putting them in something like this in just their indoor clothing. Then you can take their winter coat and put it on them backwards, put their arms through and put the coat over them. Okay. Then you have the coat whenever, whenever you get where you're going. Um, but especially with this size or this style, it works very well because you're bringing this indoors before you take them in and out generally. So the seat um, starts off warm. So right, the seat, seat is warm, warm. And, okay. you know, and, and you don't have to worry about taking the child. It's, it's difficult if you opt for one of the convertible seats, mm -hmm. um, but it's more important that they are safe. Sure. Um, and, and it depends a lot on the child. Some children will sit there completely still, and you can put them, you know, put the blankets over them. They won't do anything with it, and that's fine. You know, there's, there's a lot of things mm -hmm. I can't say blanket yes or no for because it depends on your right. child, right. Um, behavior right. issues and, and abilities and all those things. You so. don't want them accidentally pulling that blanket over their face just right. with their normal movement. Right. And so it you know, broke my heart when the safety concerns came out with this mm -hmm. type of device that, you know, a bundle me type device where you put the bottom goes into the seat and then this covers over the child because I thought this was great and thought, you know, here's the answer to my prayers. I can put my child in the seat, you know, she will stay warm, put a little hat on her and call it a day and this is great. But again, the concern here is what the, the, the back part of this is going between your child and the seat. So and it's therefore, not breathable. <laughs> it's not breathable, but it's right. also more wiggle, more problems. Yeah voids yep. the safety warranties of any car seat. Right, you're just not going to get them securely in the car seat with something like that on. And the reality is if you're just, I mean, if you're taking them in some place, the amount of time they're going to spend outside, they're not going to freeze to death. Mm -hmm. But is, is uh, suffocation or is a car accidents? Sure. Huge risk and a huge, obvious, measurable risk. Um, but the cold from just going here to there, not a real measurable risk. Now, I read there. that three out of like four people install these, install them wrong. Are we supposed to use the seat belts or the hooks? Which one is it? And that's a personal preference only. Um, I the have both. The is seat, well, and you absolutely <laughs> do not want to use both. Okay. Um, the cars, at the, same time, the seats mean. at the same time. Right. The seats themselves are not manufactured to handle the strength that's going to be there if you use both the seat belt and the latch hooks. Okay. Wow. Um, right, so so you, you pick really one or the other. Of. The latch belt is made of the same exact material as the seat belt, so the safety level is the same for both of them. As long as you do it right. Right, absolutely. <laughs> there's the wrinkle. Um, and there's, there's a wrinkle with the seat belt that okay. um, we'll, we'll get to in just a second, which is the, the reason that we, we try and encourage a lot of people to use latch. Latch hooks are in every vehicle now, um, in every rear seat position. Some of them are real obvious, like mm -hmm. this one is. Yeah. Some of them are further in, and you yeah. really got to stick your hand I'm, in. I'm doing that. Hooks are some on the ground, aren't there? Are some on the ground? Well, those are hooks for. Um, there's a roof latch, right. and in SUVs, they will be below. Right. Um, and some cars are now putting them so that when the child is rear facing, and you have a car seat that has the top tether, is what it's called, you can do it to the front. Almost every car seat hmm. on the market today does not have you use a top tether with the rear facing. Okay. Um, because the, the car manufacturers were so far behind in putting hooks under, because they would technically be under the front seat then. Right. Um, okay. So you can use either, you have to decide. I didn't use the latch hooks very much. Mine were buried and there was food and all sorts of other things in there, so I didn't want to use them. The biggest problem with using the seatbelt is that this seatbelt is designed so that I can sit in the back, I can tie my shoes, I can reach down, I can do whatever I want. If there's an accident, it's gonna lock up. And, Mm -hmm. Protect me. Okay. When you're installing a car seat, it has to be locked all the time so you don't end up with the okay. car seat rolling. So you don't, yeah, God forbid you have the car seat go. Right. You don't want the car seat to be engaged and in the seatbelt. You want it to already be locked and engaged before you're even going. Now, does it stay locked if you use the base? Once you put it in once, does it stay locked or yep. do you have to unbuckle and do it every the time? The way to lock the seatbelt out and it will stay is you pull out every inch of the webbing and you do it kind of slowly um, because if you jerk it, it will give you that locked, okay. but it's not really. So every inch of it. And then as you're putting it back, you should be able to hear and feel it clicking. It's a ratcheting. Okay. So now it's locking it in every position. So as soon as I put a little bit more in, now it's locked in that position. I put okay. a little bit more in, it's locked in that position. Um, and to unlock it then, because you're taking the car seat out or somebody else is sitting in there, you just put it all back in, and now it goes back to being that seatbelt so that moves. Again. Okay. I know I've done that wrong. I'm thinking of the time before I had children, and I, I will tell you, watching a friend's child, and her father was horrified when of he the ones, got yeah. her out of the car. He said, oh my gosh, she's not even the attached. Air. And usually <laughs> yeah. moms will discover it because yeah. they will buckle the car seat in. It's all nice and snug. They'll right. go around a corner. Car seat rolls. List. Okay. Right. That's what it is. The, roll wasn't, the, the movement wasn't fast enough to lock the seatbelt, and the seatbelt wasn't permanently locked, so that's what you end up with. Okay. So now this one with the weight, you, you don't have to keep them in there until the weight limit, or do you? Well, is it supposed to be up until one in this kind of a thing, or can you put them in? The, the age limit really is, is two years rear-facing. And the style of seat, 
Um, and the kind of seat you buy is based on the size of the child. They will all have yeah, stickers on them that tell you the, the length of the baby or the height of the baby and the weight. So as long as you're within those uh, standards, then the child is fine. And you ignore the, the feet touching the seat, you watch for the head, and you watch for the side. You gotta make sure that they fit in there and you can okay. get the straps out and whatnot. And their shoulder height, too, is how you determine whether the child is too big. When they are rear facing, the straps have to be at or below the shoulders, and when they're forward facing, they have to be at or above. So when the child's shoulders are above your highest strap, that seat is no longer okay. suitable for so that child. Right. Up, right. You got the straps way up here, so you can imagine their head then is coming out above this. And yep. for the older kids, that's okay. The babies with no head control are babies whose head is proportionally very, very large compared to their body. Right. Some of us never have grown out of For that. All I, children. I was going to say, my kids all have giant yeah. heads, so we'll never outgrow that either. My daughter was rear facing until she was about two and a half. Yep. And finally she said, Mom, can I look and see you? Like she was talking to me right. rear facing, and so. Yeah. I was trying to keep her safe. Yep. No, so you're going to do rear facing two years, and you just have to buy the seat that okay. fits your child um, and go with that. Uh, these convertibles go from being rear facing to them being forward facing at two years old. Okay. And when the child is in this seat, as soon as their shoulders are just above this strap line, they're gonna be too big for this. Um, their head, uh, we say the midpoint of their ears for here, you just wanna have that, that protection so they don't get that whiplash style injury where they go backwards. Okay. If, um, you know, there's a headrest on there that affords you some more uh, protection there. Okay, so you can imagine, have, if you had this backwards, you're still in the rear facing mode, you've mm -hmm. got a two year old, those feet are definitely touching the seat and kicking the seat and Cheerios yeah. are getting ground into the seat underneath it. Mm -hmm. Is it, we in my car have a, a kind of a, a mat that went on the back of the seat and underneath it, is that okay or is that a cause more wiggle on the seat itself and, and therefore is unsafe and I've been putting my daughter at risk all these years? Nope, it's mostly fine. Okay. Um, you know, I have, I had something in my car when he was rear facing and I put a towel up here and it's tucked in. Okay. Um, and then on the base part of the seat, in fact, if you have leather or the, the vinyl seats that are slippery, uh, we put a non-slip shelf liner type, the thin rubber uh, material. So like we you get it at a, like a home goods store we, or Walmart, whatever. wherever we okay. get the roll of it and we cut it off in a okay. square. We put it on your seat and we put this, wow, the car seat That's a great tip. Okay. Because when you snug down the seat, you're still gonna get wiggled when it's on that, that uh, vinyl or leather seat. Okay. So we put that underneath. The biggest things to look for, is it something that your child can rip off and, and suffocate themselves with? That's another They're great point. They're two years old, yep. that's more of a disciplinary issue. You know? <laughs> right. um, yes, there's all sorts you know, of disciplinary right. issues. And that, that, that's, that's a whole different ball of sure. wax. But, um, um, but no, uh, as, for safety reasons, and if they're rear facing and there's something here, they shouldn't be able to get that off until they're okay. old enough to be told not to. And what about not. those like mirrors and stuff? I don't like anything in a car that's not attached to the car. Um, you know, there is story after story um, of things that become just bullets in a vehicle right. in a crash, mm -hmm. from cases of water to frozen turkeys to the passengers shibaxis, that are shibaxis, unsecured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the rear passenger often kills the front passenger because the front passenger wears a seatbelt because that's what the law says. The rear passenger flies forward and mm. kills the front passenger. Okay. So, it, you know, I don't like anything that's unsecure. I, I know that you want to see your baby, um, and in two years' time, you will know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the new moms are always in the back. Right. The new moms are always chauffeured in the back. You can ride in the back, and that's fine. Yeah. And most moms will turn them around prior to that two years, and it's just a matter of convenience. They want to be able to reach back and fix mm -hmm. the bottle, get the binky. Yeah. Um, those things are dangerous on a whole different level because you're distracting yourself right. from the road. Right. You know, now between cell phones and everything else, you know, people really need to put everything down, just drive, get everybody in your car there safely, and then worry yeah. about everything else. The snack so I don't like the stuff that's minutes. unattached. It's okay you know, the cup for the holders snack that are attached, late. they can put yep. their stuff in it. If you've okay. got siblings, put them back there. That's their job to entertain them. That's why I space my kids out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. So they're there to help. Perfect. Okay, so you got them in, you're turning them around. Now you're going to go this way. How you don't have a base necessarily with this one. What are we doing here? to get this seat in place. This is gonna be yep. buckles on the bottom or seat belt as well? Or yep. is this all only seat yep. belt? You now before you go, a quick question. When I, wherever we put these in, like one of us like climbs on it so it's really and you tight. Do. And you do. Is that what you're supposed to do to yep. make it down? Um, yep, and it's not it the counts. easiest thing, it's a especially when you're, so you can check that off. When you're your... wearing this outfit and yeah. you're in the back seat That's of right. a two-door Honda, it's a lot of fun to get the seat in properly. Um, this seat has a little foot. Um, this little foot folds in to allow you to get a reclined angle when they are rear-facing. Okay. And then when you turn them around, the foot will snap back out. 
and the next. So that's a good point. So you've got a baby in this type of seat, which is it's licensed to do. It yep. has that information. A baby is appropriate for this seat. You've got to create an angle. How do you stop this type of wiggle? Uh, often we put something under the front of the car seat. Okay. Um, you won't need it if you end up using the base or the infant carrier and you have the base. Almost all of them have this foot yeah. that gives you that angle. Okay. Um, but when you don't have it and you have something like this, mm -hmm. I use this. Um, this is just like a pool noodle that's a little bit firmer. Get a pool noodle. You can also it. use pool noodles. Right. I use pool noodles and tape them together. Okay. Uh, you can use a bath towel and you're going to put it under the very front of the seat okay. in that little wedge there. Um, and then that just gives you the, the right angle so that when I push this down and get it nice and tight, it's still kicked back enough. Okay. That's really only important for the first couple of months until the baby has enough neck muscles to mm -hmm. right themselves. You know, what you want to make sure is that if they do flop forward, because they will, sure. just on a mild acceleration, we're not talking you're driving like a race car, but just a mild not acceleration. Like how you drive. Yeah, not like how you drive. my SUV and, and I'm going. Right, and they'll flop. And as yeah. soon as they're able to right themselves, then you're, there's much less concern and you can probably get rid of stuff like this. Okay, but once you've spent all that time and effort to put the seat in correctly, why do you want to mess with it? Right, once I, you I, cut I'm it, yeah. leaving it, I'm taking it out until they're in college. A lot of people yeah. have to take them out because you've right. got, you know, dad picks car. up and mom yeah. drives off and yeah. grandma does you know this in between. And there so. can be a big expense associated with these, but it doesn't have to be. The more expensive isn't necessarily They're all run through the, the exact same safety standards. Right. Okay. They all meet the safety standards. If they're on the shelves of Babies R Us or Walmart or Target, they've all met the same standards. Really? Um, okay. So I, I don't see any difference. Quite frankly, once you get up to the 200 pound seats, they or the $200 seats, they generally weigh about 70 pounds. And they're Is very there an eight year old that's 200 pounds? This is a whole nother, that's a whole nother show. That's a whole nother, right. That's a whole nother show. So that's, okay. and you know, so a seat like this um, runs about $40 um, okay. uh, and, and is very convenient. Um, in addition to the foot that changes it from rear to forward, you also have your two different belt paths. Um, and you're gonna use the one that's closer to the seat back. So when you're forward facing, you're gonna run the belt through here. Okay, there's a tunnel on the side. Yep, and there's generally a sticker with arrows that say... Yeah, I've, I've seen it kind of color-coded, you know, if you're doing mm -hmm. it this way, follow the red arrows. If you're doing it this way, blue arrows. Yep. Or and if you're rear-facing, the belt path is right here, much thinner usually, and you're going to okay. scrape up your hand, and you run it through, because you always want the seatbelt that's closest to the yes, seatbelt. Yes, I always have to take If you run the seatbelt through here, number one, you may have trouble with it reaching. The okay. latch belt probably will not reach all the way. And the other thing is, if there is an accident, you're going to end up with a motion like this. And where is the best place to put in the on the outside or in the middle? Rear middle seat is the safest place in a vehicle crash wow. stat wise. Um, it does not go down that much when you talk about the rear outboard, but every child should always be in the rear seat when possible. Always, always, always in a car seat. Um, even you know your nine, ten year olds that are out of car seats, rear seat. Their bodies are just not designed to handle the impact in the front. The airbags in the front. Um, you never put a rear facing seat in front of an airbag. Um, ever. Uh, so say I, you have a pickup truck and well, you just have right. one seat. Right. Turn those airbags off. Yep. Most of the pickup trucks will have an off switch. Um, if they don't, they often have a weight thing now. Um, okay. So they will tell you it's off, even though the car seat's in there and the baby's in there because it's not registering enough weight. Okay. And that's fine. You know, we, we have to deal with pickup trucks. You know, they have to, they have their own issues. Um, a lot of times, even if they have the little back seat, it's not big enough for a car sure. seat. Um, sure. you know, I had that when I was young. So, um, so, yeah, but just never in front of an airbag and always the middle, the rear. And now with the airbags, they're doing the curtain airbags. A lot of our injuries on that rear outboard was just the glass um, and okay. minor injuries from the doors. Now that you're getting those side curtain airbags, you have much less. So the rear seat is really the safest. Enveloped in airbags yeah. almost. Okay. And yeah. when can you come to my house? Yeah. And when, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, Appointments? <laughs> or? we go all over the place. My partner and I, we go all over because a lot of times I don't want people, if they say my car seat's old, it's been in a crash. Um, I, I, I found it on the side of the road. I don't want them driving the child to my office. Right. So we, I will go to their house. Um, you know, okay. that's obviously within the city. We're talking about that expired. You were yeah, talking so about expired. Yeah, so car seats can expire. Car that sounds crazy, expire. but it does happen. It does. I mean, if you think about it, it, it generally boils down to the fact that they are in the extreme cold and the extreme mm -hmm. hot, and the plastic is just going to break down. Right. You know, you talked about the... Yeah, so babies drool, and the drool mm. and the ground-up Cheerio, whatever, comes into the straps, and it can degrade the... The, the webbing the material. adherence of the webbing material, yep. which is gross, but it is what it is. So they are stamped um, on the bottom with an expiration date. Um, it's not always the easiest to read, but this one says 2017. And is it usually about five years? Uh, they are extending them now, so okay. a lot of the seats now are good for 10 years. You know what it just okay. boils down there is giving them the time to test them that long. 
Um, okay. You know, a seat has to be around for 10 years for me to tell you to last 10 years. Right. So, I, you know, it, that's the problem is they upgrade the, the fabrics and they upgrade so many things All that right. you end okay. up with not enough time to test them. Right. So that's the only thing. But it's always just a year. Um, it's not going to give you a month and a year generally. Okay. So your sister has kids. Now you have kids. She says, oh, take my old car seat. Maybe that's not going to work. Well, you know, if you Maybe know they've they they never been in a crash, mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing. They're not designed to, to withstand more than one crash because okay. you just don't know. Did, the, did you get a hairline crack in that plastic? Right. And now it's not even going to stop in a 10-mile-an-hour fender bender bumper, you know? So you got to, if you know it was never in anything um, mm -hmm. and it's not expired and it's not recalled, that's another big thing. I carry sure. a 200-page recall list wow. with me so that I can check and I get the updates sent right to me. Okay. Uh, Plenty of websites you can check for that. And if you go to a certified technician, they will check that. Um, so if you roll into, you know, the, the grease fire department or someplace to get a check, okay. the first thing they're going to do is check that recall list. Okay. So it's not recalled. It's not out of date. You want to put it in your car. Let's talk for a second about putting a baby in the seat. I think the rules are a little bit different for baby straps versus bigger kid straps, but correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe the it's rules are the same for everybody. It's just a matter of facing and forward facing. If you think about it, when you're forward facing in a car and your seatbelt goes up, and in above you. Okay. That's the way it is okay, for people sense. that are forward because that's the way it stops your momentum. It doesn't cause you to impact on the belt okay, so itself. Okay, so coming up and over. So, you, if, so that's why you're saying you want the strap to come up higher. If they're forward facing. Okay. If they're should forward we turn facing, it even though we should okay. never turn it? Well, we, if this yeah, seat is so forward facing. See. This can be a forward facing. And now this baby would have to be much size. bigger. Yes. <laughs> right, and you'd want the straps to go in above their shoulders when they are okay. forward facing. When they are turned around, what happens if the seatbelt is above their shoulder and there is a crash, they are going to go this way and they're going to impact with the seatbelt right on their shoulders. Okay. It's not going to be very strong. Yeah. So when they are rear facing, you need the straps to go in mm -hmm. below, at or okay. below their shoulder okay. level. Um, and then you just keep moving them as the baby grows and he gets closer to this one and, and surpasses the strap, then you would move them. Most of these combination seats on the back will tell you that you can only use certain ones. It looks like on this one, um, these these top ones are the only ones that you're going to use for forward facing. Okay. So what you're playing, I mean, basically molded into the plastic as yep, little instructions you. on the seat. Yep. Okay. And so with these little babies, I see this on, you know, friends post pictures on Facebook of their new baby in their seat, and they've got the little padding over the straps that comes with the car seat sometimes. Yeah. They generally doesn't come with, a, it doesn't come with a lot of car seats, um, okay. and people put them on because people are, they think that they are way more fragile than they actually are. Okay. Um, so if it came with it and you want to put it on there, that's fine. Okay. If it's going to get in your way of giving them a snug fit, get rid of it. Okay. Think about where they were for nine months. Right. right. They were snug. They were oh, we'll never them. forget where they yeah. were. No, we, lived, we lived it, and we know, and then they made it out. They came out, so they right. are tough. Right. They are. They are. So, uh, you know, what I like to see, your best practice, and uh, my story's got all tight here. My, your best practice is to get them in as snugly as you can. This little chest strap, but you, generally they have a picture right on it. We want it at armpit level because you just you want it to impact that sternum okay. if you can, which is a, you know one of the points of a protection for them. Because okay. um, I see that a lot. I see it down at the belly. Oh, the belly and the belly is terrible. The, uh, the belly is not gonna. No, it's gonna good. cause a lot of injury. Right. Um, you know our bellies can withstand a little bit more, but um, especially in an infant, that's gonna cause that buckle to go all the way through mm -hmm. until it hits their spine. So you want to keep it up around the armpit level. Um, and the straps should be so tight that you can't pinch. You know, I mean, I can pinch ex excess, so that's not tight enough. So I would want to crank that down tighter and move this, you know, don't, don't let this go up into the poor little neck of the baby. <laughs> and, um, and then generally this buckle is also adjustable. This is very loose. You can see there's a big, huge gap here. So you'd want to move this back if we were making this baby secure in this seat. Okay. I think we've covered a lot. I think we got, this is a lot of information. So the high points that I'm thinking about are don't bundle your baby before you put him in the seat. Maybe bundle over them because you want the straps yeah, to be as snug as possible. Yeah, you just put coat on their arms here and okay. lay it right on them. And I think the, the sticky drawer liner for the seat cover, that's a great tip to yep, prevent so this, some of the slippage. Yeah. Even though it sounds safer to use more straps, the better, but you either want to use the latch system or the seat belt. And not both. And not both at the same time. And if the baby's feet or the toddler's feet are touching the back of the seat, that's going to be okay. That's fine. That's much less of a yep. problem than if they're forward facing inappropriately. Right. Oh, right. Absolutely. All yep. right. And there are many, many, many programs that will uh, get you a seat if you need a seat. Okay. Are there websites that you like? Or I've heard that the American Academy of Pediatrics now has an app 
for a car seat installation? Um, are there, are I'm there not sure. other resources uh, that you like to use? The Monroe County Office of Traffic Safety uh, okay. is, is the big, I mean, they are the ones in the area that give out car seats to low income families. If you're plugged into any program, WIC, food stamps, anything, you're entitled to it, you can get it. We do them every single month. Um, so uh, uh, that's my, that is my go. They have everything right there. Um, if you just need it inspected, you got it, and you think oh, I don't think it's right, okay. you can come to our office on Genesee Street, um, and, uh -oh. and we'll They're check in. Get extra people, right? I think well, because it is amazing, though, how many people <laughs> will go without. I've, when I worked as a reporter, I would see so many people in the city with just babies on the oh. on the car seat, sure, or their and lap. On their lap. Yeah, there's a there's a big misconception that when I'm just driving a short distance, mm -hmm. the car seat's not that necessary. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that when you're driving a short distance, you don't pay near the attention as if you were getting on the expressway or if you're going someplace unfamiliar. Oh, you're driving the car then, you're looking around, you're okay. paying attention. Oh, but when I'm just driving to the store that I've been to a thousand times, uh, I'm not okay, paying attention. attention. Wow. And okay. then something runs out and you step on the brake and that baby's gonna rock it right out. And it doesn't matter mm -hmm. how strong you are, if you're holding it, you're not gonna be able to stop yourself, you're not gonna be able to, um, so in the car seat, in the back seat, every time. And it's the law. It's and it's the law. law. It's the law. And so what are the, the laws? The Let's review the laws. the tickets are very expensive. Okay. Um, More the laws expensive than a car that, seat, certainly. Right. Up, okay. to, up to four years old, they have to be secured in the car seat, and the car seat has to be secured to the vehicle. Um, after four years old, they have to be in a lap and shoulder belt. Okay. If you have one of those vehicles that still has a, just a lap belt in the middle, and you have the shoulder belts on that, you have to have your child in the shoulder belt seat. If you have a um, above 16 year old person in a shoulder belt and a below 16 year old person in just a lap belt, that's a different ticket in and of itself because we don't want the young people in just a lap belt. It mm -hmm. is not enough to stop them. You have to have at least those three points of contact with the body to stop yourself in an accident. Okay, again, so much information. Officer mm -hmm. Running, we thank you. Thanks for joining us again. Mm -hmm. More information can always be found at 292baby.org, or as we heard, you can check our local county website for more information, too. Thank you again for joining us here today. We hope you learned something. I know I did.